What's up guys? Okay, this is the uh, last video. This is the third time I've tried this today. That fan's irritating the hell out of me. It's a 5 volt USB fan I got off of Amazon. Um, works great. Buzzes a little bit. I'm pretty sure one of the fan blades is out of balance. We're going to try to make this short and sweet. Um, so, I've still got my automatic buck boost converter for my solar charging system. Um, I'm having a hell of an issue with my solar panels. I'm probably going to have to tear them apart and uh, test each individual solar cell and uh, probably going to have to make my own solar panel. If I do, I will record it and I will post it. In the meantime, I have all of the main electronics finished. I have USB functionality, although it's um, limited right now. I only have two USB ports that I can charge off of, and they're both individual systems. I have my butt converter made to run from 7 to 17 volts input, um, 5 volt 3 amp output. Um, this works great. Running it off the 2 series uh, 7 parallel 18650 pack. Um, this is my everyday carry right here. This is what I use for my phone, Bluetooth, um, my 18650 charger to keep all the others charged up. Um, the only thing I haven't been able to charge with this to this point is my LiPos. Um, with my Cleto, which I got the RTA section for, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I can go a week at a time with that setup like that, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So I've got two weeks worth of battery life in those LiPos. So short term, being able to charge those isn't a huge deal. Long term, past two weeks, it becomes a really big deal. So this is fantastic for all the small stuff. I can only charge one device at a time. When the rest of my USB stuff gets here, um, I'll have a much better system set up. I'll have a, at least four 3 amp USB ports, 5 volt 3 amp USB ports. Um, in their own housing, they will all run off of, I haven't decided which battery yet, probably this one. Which I can charge off my LiPo charger now, thanks to, I apologize, it's not just a LiPo charger. It's a balanced charger, smart charger, it'll do nickel metal hydride, it'll do lead acid, it'll do lithium polymer, lithium ion, um, lithium phosphate, pretty much any battery out there. Nickel metal hydride, I think I already said that, because uh, that's what I've been using to charge this. I trickle charge this at one amp. Um, from completely dead, it takes about 20 hours. Um, I would like to get an IMAX B6 and test the actual capacity of this pack, because I, I honestly think this is closer to 20,000 milliamp hours. Based on uh, charging time, all of my testing, it really tests out to be closer to 20,000 milliamp hours. But without a good tester to tell me that, um, I, it's all guesstimating. So, what do I have here sitting right in front of me? This is my 9 volt nickel metal hydride battery running my 100 watt inverter, which I just got yesterday. I have both input measurement and output. Oh, come on. There we go. I've got 6.5 volts input and 11.9 volts output is what it's set to currently. It reads both input and output. That is charging or running my balance charger. You can see the only thing plugged in is that running my 3S LiPo at 3 amps currently. I've uh, been doing it for about, been running for about 15 minutes. And uh, it's noticeably warm, but nothing I would even be remotely concerned about. So there you have it. I can now run, I can now charge my LiPos as well as uh, anything else I've got. I have currently two 3 amp USB supplies, but in the future that's going to upgrade to four. When I get the solar panels finished, I'll be able to charge everything forever. Um, and why not?
that is working flawlessly. I am extremely happy with that. Sweet. Now the one issue, the one reason that I didn't want to use nickel metal hydrides, that I wanted to use lithium instead, um, was specifically because the nickel metal hydride batteries have a much more linear voltage drop across the discharge cycle. Um, whereas lithium ion lithium polymer batteries have a much more stable voltage uh, right up until the end of their discharge cycle where they drop off substantially. Um, which is why you can vape all day on a set of batteries and all of a sudden they just It's why you can get a lithium ion cordless drill and use it all day long without any issues whatsoever and all of a sudden when you pick it up to screw in the next drill or the next screw it just won't work. That's why because it drops off very quickly. Fill this up. So I got the RTA section for my Cleto. I was extremely skeptical at first because I've never had a good RTA section for a sub-ohm tank. They've all had some little quirk or some little issue with them. Um, generally it's substantially less airflow than the uh, standard coils. This does not. Um, this has the standard coils in it that it comes with, the uh, little micro Clapton's. This thing works insanely well. Um, this will be, that was the eighth time I've filled this up today. It doesn't hold as much fluid um, with the RTA section. Still working great. But the flavor off of this is amazing. Um, amazing flavor production, amazing vapor production really for an RTA for it. Um, for $10 to $15, 12 to $15, you cannot beat that. That is fantastic. And um, because of how well it works and because um, the math tells me I can go a week. I imagine I'll probably be able to peter another day out of it if I really want to. Um, this is going to be my go-to bug out bag survival setup. It's currently my all day setup anyways, but with the ability to build coils with the tank, with the excellent system like this, it's smaller. Um, the only problem that I have with using this as my permanent survival setup is the size of the box. Um, it is great for everyday use, but for carrying for forever, I'm not so sure. I may have to build a smaller version. Um, I have considered getting a, uh, a DNA 200 chip and putting a DNA 200 chip into a custom housing and using these 2S LiPos to run it. It'll still be a little larger, but since it'll be built all in together like that, um, without all of my larger custom-made components, I think I could get it pretty freaking small. This thing's great, guys. If you have a Cleto and you're looking at the RTA section, I highly recommend it. Um, I buy all my own stuff or make it. I don't do reviews. I don't have people send me shit. I have not even attempted it. I don't really care to. Um, if you want to send me a, a DNA 200 device to test out and potentially rip apart and use these batteries for, I'm more than happy to do it. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, 
it's just really, I guess even a DNA 200 wouldn't work because they require a 3S. I need a 200 watt chip that I can use a 2S battery in. Let me know what you've got because I've got my Tesla 200, but it's uh, not high enough quality for me to consider using it. We're up to constant voltage. This is only a 2650 mAh battery. So uh, we're already up to constant voltage. It was about half dead. So um, as the primary load is now off of this, it's actually increased to almost 7. It's bouncing between 7.0 and 7.1 volts from 6.7. So there is a fairly decent amount of voltage drop in this, even uh, boosting up to 12 volts from at 3 amps. So I'm really probably pulling uh, close to 6 amps off of this. But if you guys know of a good pre-made 200 watt chip that I can buy individually, um, that will use a 2S, please let me know. I will be more than happy to check that out. Um, this is going to be done in a couple minutes. Vape on, guys.